You can turn on that rocker switch now. Go ahead. I'm not saying it's gonna catch fire, but it might. This is Bobby McHugh, by the way. And if it does, it's gonna be in the trunk. So we're just about ready to do our first electric turbo pull. Let me give you guys a tour in case you haven't seen it in some of the previous videos. These are the packs, the battery packs. This, by the way, is a charger. I built the charge them. I topped them off. It's a control box. The control box is set to about 90, 95%. The ESC is up there. That's the speed controller. It triggers automatically as long as we have the rocker switch on the dashboard on. So here's what the sledgehammer looks like under the hood. valve when the throttle closes you can see all the massive cables this is six four gauge welding cables 53 horsepower lmt motor and it's a billet vortec si impeller and an si volume or volute depending if you're from europe or not and if you've been watching my videos, you know that we always have to have a fire extinguisher standing by because that is a, sadly a recurring issue. I didn't know I was in a fire hazard. <laughs> Before we get into our first electric turbo dyno pull, I wanted to show you guys where we left off naturally aspirated. These were the three pulls before then, and this is the best of the three. This is the last of the three. So our baseline number to beat here is 385.48 rear wheel horsepower. And that happened at 6,220 engine RPM with a correction factor of SAE. This is kind of a bit of a pet peeve of mine. There are some YouTubers out there who, you know, I feel they're a bit deceptive and they'll use standard numbers. Watch what happens when I change the correction factor to standard. Go up here and just hit STD, which in itself is a joke, but whatever. So this is standard correction factor. It's 394.97. Not a huge difference, but hey, if you're trying to make yourself look good, that's one way to do it. But that is not the correction factor that the automotive industry uses. SAE is what the automotive industry actually uses. So 385.48, once again, is our baseline number. Let's go to our first sledgehammer dyno pull. I didn't record it. <laughs> <laughs> of course it didn't. You believe that. It was as scared as I was. <laughs> so on our first dyno pull, the good news is everything held together. There was no fire. The bad news is we think the EMF from the electric turbo knocked the dyno offline so we didn't get a recording. Is that what you think happened, Ray? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So we're going to change the tech signal pickup over to the inductive and um, make another pull and we'll see what happens. So this is actually our second sledgehammer dyno pull, but the first one we got numbers from, let's see where we ended up. It's a little exciting. 517. Man, I'm telling you one thing, that power loosens that converter up. All right, Ray, give us the pro lecture on what's going on here. Well, what's happening is if we look at it based off of RPM, the torque converter is pushing with the boost, it's pushing up almost to 58, 50, 5900 RPM. So out here where we ran it to all motor, we ran out to about 6250 and we picked up about 140 horsepower okay so now if we get down here and make it based off of speed we're never getting a full lock up on that torque converter basically a one-to-one -one. where is the speed again we're hitting about 133 mile an hour all motor at the same rpm 
we're basically hitting about 145. So let's bring in the engine speed on this graph is down here at the bottom. So where we're peaking out here speed wise at 133. Okay. Okay. Actually right there. That's 6,200. All motor, we're at 5,900. So it's still locking the converter up if I stay in it. So It'll still accelerate the car. Is what yep. you're saying. The converter's yep. still slipping. Yep. So that number is artificially low? I would think so because if we get it to lock up and give us a one to one, our, our power should realistically pick up. Five twenty-six. I stayed in a little bit longer. How's air fuel looking? Air fuel was um, eleven eight up top. <laughs> was eleven six? It's amazing to me how you can just call it like right yeah. off the bat and get it right the first time. Yeah. But it picked up. I mean, it picked up more through the whole bottom end. We just pulled a little bit of fuel out of it. And- um, Is it still pushing through the converter? Yeah. Yeah. So it's new converter time most likely. Yeah, it, ne it needs to be tighter. comes on. I can tell when the electric turbo kicks in, man. Yeah, we picked up a little 532. bit. 532. So here it is based off of RPM where we were speed on the last graph you pictured. Right. So here it is RPM wise rolling up through. And I mean, it's almost identical. But yeah. mm -hmm. honestly, right here where it spools and hits, I mean, it's 10 foot pounds of torque, eight foot pounds of torque. Let's take a quick look at the final data we got from the dyno session. I'm going to do another video where I really go into the weeds and explore things that we can do to get us to our target number because we're not quite there yet. I promised 800 to 850 flywheel horsepower with converter slip. Right now we're somewhere between 722 and 755 flywheel horsepower. But looking at the numbers, so we ended up with a peak of 532 rear wheel horsepower. We left off naturally aspirated at 385. So in real horsepower, we picked up about 147 at the wheels. That's pretty good. Now, if we convert it to uh, the douche correction factor of STD, it looks even better. We picked up from 395 to 545. And we picked up exactly 150 horsepower, but that's, you know, not real. And it's a difference of three horsepower. So who really cares? It doesn't actually change reality at all. But let's stick with the SAE numbers. So I'm sure you all are wondering what kind of boost this thing made. It made an average of about 6.3 PSI. Uh, it didn't change much from pull to pull, honestly. I only tried topping off the batteries before the last pull. It didn't really make any difference. You could probably make twice as many pulls before you started seeing a significant drop off and boost. Uh, but it was about 6.3 PSI. We started off at a high of about 6.7 PSI, and it would drop down to about 6 PSI. But we were only pulling because of the converter slip, you know, a difference of about 800 RPM or so. That means at the drag strip, we probably are going to see about 6.2, 6.3 PSI, assuming we make no other changes at peak horsepower. So it should do pretty well. And finally, let's take a quick look at how the MGM ESC performed. I mean, the thing was flawless. It did an incredibly good job. I'm really happy it didn't burst into flames. That's always a good thing. Battery voltage dropped from about 62 volts down to about this line here. It does slowly descend, but it probably averages right around 52 volts. 
Uh, the incoming power peaked at like 37 kilowatts, but averaged about 35.5 kilowatts, which puts us at about, you know, mid to upper 40 horsepower range for the LMT motor. That's kind of mind boggling, but that's mostly because of the RPM it was spinning at. So if we want to look at current draw, we saw a peak over 700 amps, but for the most part, we averaged around 675 amps during the pull, which is a crazy amount of current. And the motor impeller RPM uh, peaked at about 32,000 and tapered off to just over 31,000. And then this curve here is how long it takes to spin down, which is why we have the blow off valve. I am going to do another video where I go into the weeds with this stuff and we really analyze it as well as all the stuff I can do to get us to our target horsepower. After all, we're only about 75 flywheel horsepower away from it. This was a really successful dyno session and I'm very grateful to Ray and his brother Bobby for helping me dial this thing in. And to all of you for watching, for commenting, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. And, you know, thanks for coming along with me on this journey. I'm having a blast. It's a pretty good day. Yeah. Picked up over 145 rural horsepower. Yep. Yep. Thank you, sir. I'm just going to start calling you Elon. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah. All right, Mr. Ray, thank you very much. Bobby, thank you, sir. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Take care. Take care. Uh -huh. So once again, Ray, yep. you hey, always thanks, find the power, man. Uh, I always. guess. Yeah. Yep. It's, all, it's always a, a search. You know what I mean? But what what right. amazes me is like you just look at it and you tell me exactly what to change, whether yeah. it's timing or fuel mix. We're talking not like, you know, wholesale changes. You're talking like 2% yeah. here at this very specific RPM. And, you know, proof is there. Yeah. The power every yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah.